All right, let's have a quick introduction to WinSyn, our synthetic data playground. WinSyn is uh, two data sets, one of real world uh, photographs, so windows, and um, one of a synthetic procedural model that creates renders of windows. Let's have a quick look at the um, real world photographic data. This is in the WinSyn metadata repository. There's a instructions in this file about how to um, download or render the raw data. This is all documented, but you will note that some of the metadata is in the repository and the rest of the data is stored in Globus. Globus is um, a large data set sharing facility. And you can see, for example, that if you navigate to um, the photos folder, you'll see a bunch of folders uh, named for the photographer, the location and the date. And within those, you can select uh, a file to download. Let me see how we're doing. And that will then download from Globus and you can view it locally. Um, however, doing this manually for each of the 75,000 files, 75,000 photos will be quite time consuming. So there'll it's a script um, down here in here that will help you um, use Globus automatically to download the four terabyte full data set if you wish to. That sounds too much like hard work. There are some pre-rendered data sets available at the top here at various resolutions. Um, depend, you get different numbers of windows depending on what resolution you download due to the data availability. Okay, let's go and look at the synthetic data. This is in the WinSyn repository. Um, and um, it uses Blender 3.3 to render us our um, procedural scenes, our windows. So um, I found that there's been some issues using newer versions of Blender. Sometimes they don't have backwards compatibility. So I, I use Blender 3.3. So uh, to do this, you can grab the repository and download it, and then you can open Blender. Um, you can then open the um, winsyn.blend file that is in the repository. Let's see. This is the blend file that we've just opened. And um, let's run the user interface first. So we can uh, open from the source folder GUI, scroll across with the middle mouse button. And um, if we run the GUI script, it will add this uh, WinSyn tab to the top right of our interface. Now, when we click the generate button, it takes a little bit of time we see that we've generated a building with a window. Let's um, switch on the renderer and we can admire our window from various angles. We can see some parameters in the interface here. So for example, if we change the seed or disable the physics simulation and click generate again, we'll get different results. Other things we're able to do here is uh, to change the style. So we may, for example, um, just uh, add a single texture, the same texture on every surface. And these are the variations that we used on the paper to explore the, um, the data that's available. There's other things such as labels and um, controls for the geometry in here to explore. Now, um, there's a parameter file setting here, and this is where um, the add-on in Blender will write out the parameters that were used to create this scene. If we click the edit button, it will open the parameter file down here, and we'll be able to change some of the settings. So for example, this is a JSON file, and we have to keep it correctly formatted. We could change timber frame from zero to one, save the file, 
make sure that Winson is set to generate from the file here and then click the generate button again and we should use these parameters um, from the file read in so we can see now that a timber frame has been constructed around um, the, uh, the facade let us uh, continue and have a bit of a look about, at using um, the cove interface to um, winsin let's um, what to do. Let's go back and uh, open the go.py file and this is the code entry into the uh, into Winsyn. We can see a few settings here that come from the config file and you'll want to explore this and then the details in the readme file in the repository but again basically there is a seed and there's a set of hard-coded parameters and um, we can see a line here which will create our geometry a line that will um, set up the materials so rgb is just the regular color materials so we might ultimately ask for labels or something and we see some options commented out, for example, to read parameters from disk or to write them um, to a file. So um, running this guy is as simple as uh, clicking the little triangle at the top. The seed is different, so we will see a different house up here this time. Uh, let's just tap zero on the numpad to view our window there with the camera. That all seems pretty uh, clear and good. I'll point out the second part of the Go file, which is used when we run um, in batch mode from the console. And this sets up the style and the number of images to render, as well as all sorts of other bits, such as recording the start and stop times of the renders and cleaning up after the, each render so that we're able to render many. OK, um, that's it. I, I encourage you to have fun exploring. Oh, no, I should just mention that there is this uh, bit of code here um, to enable debugging within PyCharm. Um, the Blender environment is a little bit coarse when you're trying to develop large pieces of software. So it's possible, for example, to copy out, comment out these lines. Uh, and then you can open up the uh, WinSyn project within um, PyCharm. And you need to set up a debug environment. Let's just look at this. So this is sta standard in PyCharm. You can click plus and select a new Python debug server. You should run it on the port 10.9.1.2 for the piece of code that I've just written. And you can set path mappings if you wish the debugging to work um, a little bit more fluently. Then we can uh, start the debugger. We'll see at the, the bottom of the window, we can say that it's waiting for the process to connect. We can return to Blender and um, run the Go script. This then hangs Blender because PyCharm is waiting um, here. The first time you run, you can also detect the path settings like this. And we can see we're sitting on a breakpoint uh, within Go.py push F9 to continue and then we can see the console output from Blender as well as using breakpoints around the other files within the project. Okay, that's it. Have fun. Enjoy your Windows.